affiliates have made a name for themselves in some very positive ways and some losing ways. Today I'll be informing you on the Philadelphia Phillies history, including how they started, some of the championships they've won, Harry Callas and the Philly Fanatic, some of the key players over their history, and a glimpse of what their future will hold. Hopefully you'll learn something new about the sixth oldest team in professional baseball. It all started back in 1883 when Worcester Ruby Legs franchise split and the franchise moved to Philadelphia. Al Reach, who was the first professional baseball player, actually bought the team with his attorney, John Rogers. When coming up with a name, they wanted something rooted in Philadelphia's history, so that's where they came up with the Phillies in reference to Phil. Uh, and thus, the Philadelphia Phillies were born. The first Phillies game was played on March or May 1st, 1883, at Re Recreation Park against the Providence Grace. They would lose that game, and in fact, the rest of the season, they would only win 17 games of the 98 played the first season. In fact, they, would only, they wouldn't make the World Series until 1915, and they would lose that game to lose the series to the Boston Red Sox in five games. The sad thing about Phillies history is that they've lost a lot of games. In fact, they've lost the most games in professional sports. That number is 10,462. That's more losses than, than the oldest team in professional baseball, the Atlanta Braves, which is 301 more. Even though they've lost, they've won two championships. The first one was in 1980, which was part of the golden era. The Phillies' 1980 season was full of great performances by some of the best players in Phillies history, but also some of the best in Philadelphia sports history. Mike Schmidt, who you could argue to be one of the best third basemen in history, won the most valuable player in 1980, hitting 48 home runs and 121 RBIs. The other was pitcher Steve Carlton, who is probably one of the best pitchers in the game of baseball ever. Um, he won 24 games back in, in 1980 and struck out 286 batters. With players performing like this and manager Dallas Green optimistic about the Phillies, the Phillies won 91 games and clinched their first division, clinched the division for the fourth time in the past five years. To reach the World Series, they had to face the Houston Astros, which was a tough task. After losing two of the first games, they were one game from being eliminated. Though through some extra, extra innings, they eventually got through to the World Series and for the first time in 30 years. They faced the Kansas City Royals, who were led by future Hall of Famer George Brett, who was the batting champion at that time. But they were no match for Steve Carlton and Mike Schmidt. Carlton won two of the six games, including the clincher that gave the Phillies the first World Series championship. Schmidt was one of the most valuable players in the World Series because of his two home runs. 2008 was not only the Phillies' latest world championship, but also Philadelphia's latest championship. The Phillies came into that year with a lot of motivation after last 2007 season was a disappointment as they lost to the Colorado Rockies in the first round of the playoffs. Led by 2007 MVP shortstop Jimmy Rollins, first baseman Ryan Howard, and second baseman Chase Utley, the Phillies had one of the most dynamic offenses at the time. But the person who secured the season and the second division championship in two years was all-star closer Brad Lidge. He was the best pitcher for the Phillies during that season. He finished, he was, they finished the regular season with 92 wins and were going to face the Milwaukee Brewers in the first round of the playoffs. They easily took down the Brewers in the first round, winning three of the four games played. In the league championship series, which was the next round, they faced the Los Angeles Dodgers. The Phillies came through in the clutch with home runs during, during that series. The most memorable was Matt Stairs' home run against Jonathan Broxton, who was an all-star closer. It personally is my favorite home run of all time because it was such, came through in the clutch and it was so majestic. I still, I can still picture it today. <laughs> it, um, the Phillies took down the Dodgers four games to one and were on their way to the World Series for the second, for the second time, second win. The World Series in 2008 was full of many firsts. The Phillies opponent, opponent the Tampa Bay Rays, was the first time in the World Series. Joe Blanton, a pitcher for the Phillies, hit his first Major League home run. And the first time in Major League history, a World Series game was postponed for 48 hours. But Phillies pitcher Cole Hamels took the show and won the World Series MVP and helped the Phillies win their second World Championship. As a Phillies fan, that was one of the most memorable moments of my life. And I was actually in a cow costume because I was from a Halloween party. <laughs> Every sports team has very important figures. 
For the Phillies, two that stand out to me are Harry Callis and the Phillies mascot, the Philly Fanatic. They influence the Phillies organization, organization, but also the fans. Harry Callis was the Phillies TV broadcaster from 1971 until his death in 2009. He was well known for his home run shot, This Ball is Out of Here, and when the Phillies would win, they would play his favorite song, High Hopes by Frank Sinatra. Callis is in Baseball's Hall of Fame for his broadcasting. The other figure that has impacted the Phillies is their mascot, the Philly Fanatic. There's not much to say about the Philly Fanatic other than he's a big green jolly monster that is there to entertain the people and can shoot his tongue at you and he's really he's just there to impact the game and make fun of everybody. Both figures that impacted the Phillies fan base and will continue to in the years to come. Now some of the players that I want to talk about are Mike Schmidt and Steve Carlson. They've had they want to win. And the Phillies have had 32 Hall of Famers, six retired numbers, 